What's up, everybody? Matt Gajewski here, back again with the Odd Shopper channel. And today we're talking week 12 college football betting. Before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. We're also brought to you by Bet365. They have a new limited time deal for those of you in Kentucky, Ohio, New Jersey, Virginia, Iowa, and Colorado, where you can make your first deposit with Bet365. Bet $5 on any game and you will automatically get $150 in the form of bonus bets. You can even place them on one of these games. You must be 21 to play, 18 in Kentucky. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, please call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, so we are talking the Tuesday slate. It's Maction round three, and we have a three-game slate. We'll kick things off with Toledo taking on Bowling Green. The spread is nine and a half points. The total is 52 and a half. And right away, I like the road team in Toledo minus nine and a half. I know there's not much to play for Toledo right now. They basically have locked up their side of the conference and probably will play for a conference title. They do need to get through Bowling Green first. And I think this is a spot where we can sell Bowling Green a little bit high. They've been running hot this year, beat Georgia Tech in a game they should have lost. And then they've kind of beat up on the weaker opponents in the MAC. This team has wins over Eastern Michigan, Buffalo, Akron, Ball State, Kent State. Go look at the MAC standings. That's basically just the bottom of the conference. There are two tough games. Ohio, they lost 38 to seven. And then Miami, Ohio, they lost 27 to nothing. But this is a defensive team. They're 41st in total defense. They're 107th in offense. Their O-line is terrible. 121st in pass blocking, 99th in run blocking. They're also not the healthiest team right now. They have an offensive line injury. Tunde Futukasi, but I think that might be performance related. Jake Burns actually giving them better snaps. Both their running backs, Teron Keith and Terrian Stewart are game time decisions. I don't know if they play. Terrian Stewart didn't play last week. Teron Keith, monster game, went over 100 yards rushing and receiving. He got injured really late in their game against Kent State. And they also have a lot of defensive injuries. Demetrius Hardeman has been out for the year. He got injured previously. And they were down two players in their secondary last game. Jordan Aladakun, their best corner, and Trent Sims, their best safety, both missed the game. Now, injuries are tricky in the MAC. Reporting is bad, so we won't know if these guys play or not, literally until they step on the field. But missing the previous game is not a positive sign for this team. They also have terrible quarterback play. They've been platooning Connor Basilic and Camden Orth behind that bad offensive line. Neither has been particularly good. I guess the best thing you could say is Camden North is a pretty decent rusher. He's third on the team in rushing despite playing a partial season. But this team has a defense I think that's questionable. So they, we just went through all their metrics and how they look good on defense. I think a lot of that has to do with just the opponents they faced. Last game, they allowed backup Kent State quarterback Tommy Ulitkowski to throw for 284 yards. That was 7.1 yards per attempt. So I think a lot of this just has to do with bad signal callers. 7.2 yards per attempt to Caden Salter, 12.3 to Curtis Work, 9.4 to Haynes King, 9.4 to Brett Gabbert. They faced a good quarterback. They have been pretty giving. And now they're going up against Toledo and Daquan Finn, who really has no holes. They have a couple injuries on defense, but they're depth pieces. This Toledo team is 38th in offense, 12th in total defense. They have played good teams in the MAC gotten past every one of them, beat Miami, Ohio. This team beat Northern Illinois, beat Western Michigan, beat San Jose State, who's an awesome team in the Mountain West. Their only loss came to Illinois, and that was by a score of 30 to 28. Daquan Finn has been absolutely awesome. He's the best signal caller in the MAC right now. 65.5% completion, 8.4 yards per attempt. He's extremely mobile, 5.4 yards per carry. Offensive line is very good here. They're 13th in pass blocking. Penny Boone has been running all over the field. This is a very complete team. I know they're on the road. I know they basically locked up a conference title berth, but I think this team should be favored by more than nine and a half points here. I took this at nine and a half and I think this should be double digits. So first one up, we'll take Toledo and we'll lay the points. Next game is Western Michigan taking on Northern Illinois. The spread is five and a half in favor of Northern Illinois. The total sitting at 55. I don't have as much interest in betting this game. 
but the line's moving a lot, and I think I might have more interest if it continues to move. Right away, I side with Western Michigan, but money's just pouring in on Northern Illinois. There's not really a large incentive to bet this right now. And Northern Illinois might be one of the trickiest teams to bet in all the MAC. 99th in offense, good offensive line, and a 37th in pass blocking, 50th in run blocking, and a pretty solid defense, 42nd overall. And where they excel is in coverage. They're a little weaker up front, 33rd in coverage. That is a very strong statistic when facing an air raid Western Michigan team who will try to throw the ball over the top of you. Their injuries are on offense. The main one is Casper Rutkiewicz, their wide receiver. He's missed three straight games, which is important because Rocky Lombardi hasn't been great. 57.5% completion, 6.7 yards per attempt. More turnover-worthy plays than big-time throws. He's not running, but the offensive line has kept him clean. This is kind of a Jekyll and Hyde team. You know, they beat... Ohio, but then they lose two straight games to Central Michigan and Ball State, lost to Toledo, lost to Tulsa. It's tough to really parse this team because they play down to competition at times, and then they've slaughtered some other teams that they shouldn't have. On the other side, Western Michigan's a team I have been impressed with. Their metrics are a little hard to parse because they made a QB change, so 79th in total offensive efficiency. I personally think they're better than that since they made the trade over to Hayden Wolf. 67% completion, 7.1 yards per attempt. Not running much, but he plays behind an excellent offensive line, who's 35th in pass blocking, 9th in run blocking. The real struggles for Western are on defense. They're 119, they're 131st against the run, and 78th against the pass. The question I have is, can they do enough offensively? Because they're going to give up points. And can they cover a 5.5 point spread? That's the sign I tentatively lead to. But we're going to wait. We're going to see if we can't get a better number with this. Make sure you check Chalkboard or hit me up on Twitter to see whether I bet this or not if you're interested. But if you're betting all three games, no matter what, the lean currently is Western Michigan taking the points. Last game, we have Akron taking on Eastern Michigan. The worst game on our three-game slate. Eastern is a four-point favorite. The total is 39 points. I'm going under 39, as crazy as this sounds, but couple reasons why. Looking first and foremost, both teams are not fast. Akron's about average in pace, they're 70th, but Eastern Michigan's below average, 97th in total pace. Both teams are built on their 50th in total defense, and Eastern Michigan's 45th. Then you look at the offenses, both of them are atrocious. Akron is 133rd, dead last in total offensive efficiency. They have a terrible offensive line that's outside the top 120, in pass blocking and run blocking. They have an injury to their quarterback, DJ Irons. He's out for the year, torn ACL. Jeff Undercuffler has been playing for them, but he got hurt in their last game. I think he's going to play, but he also... He has negative 163 rushing yards this year. Eastern Michigan is a pretty decent pass rush at 53rd in the country. So he's going to be under pressure. I don't know how he's going to escape it. And he's also down one of his receivers, Alex Adams, who didn't play in their last game. But can Eastern really exploit the defensive weaknesses of Akron? I don't know. And I say weaknesses because their worst skill is pass rush and coverage, but I don't think Eastern can throw over the top of you. And again, weakness in parentheses because Akron's defense is the strength of their team, their 50th overall. You look at the quarterback play for Eastern, Austin Smith has a 55% completion for 5.9 yards per attempt well below average, and then 19 turnover-worthy plays to only seven interceptions. He's running pretty hot on throws that should be interceptions that just get dropped by defenders. Also playing behind a really bad offensive line, 33% pressure rate. This team has a ton of problems scoring, 124th in total offense, 104th in pass blocking. So in a game that's slow, both teams have good defenses, and both teams have bad offenses with really bad quarterback play behind bad offensive lines, I'm going to side with an under. Let me know in the comments what you think about these three games. If you have a question, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Matt underscore Jeske. Otherwise, we'll be back tomorrow breaking down round two of Maction. Until then, good luck, everybody. We'll see you next time.